Hi, I'm Kenzie Fell, producer and co-host of McGowan Braybender's podcast channel, Side Effects. We're welcoming back a veteran guest, Christy Dinsmore. Christy is a career coach and partner at Carter Frazier, specializing in leadership development, talent management, and succession planning. In one of our recent conversations with Christy, we began discussing the work from home strategy. Many companies were forced to adopt this when COVID-19 swept the nation back in March. For the most part, this approach was seen as a success. Employees were performing well remotely, even while juggling childcare and the distractions at home. As this work from home experiment continues, Christy deals with organizations that see cracks that are starting to emerge. Join us as we discuss how employers are navigating working from home and how they're working to transition their workforce back into the office. Let's jump in. Welcome, Christy. Welcome to Side Effects with an A. When effect is normally used, it's a noun. It's already occurred. I'm Scott McGowan. I'm Kenzie Fell. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. Now, I think even for our listeners, too, I think what's important is um, we might be right, we might be wrong. But one thing is, we're not afraid. Our goal is to get you to think about things a little differently. And we're unscripted. We just have free reign for 20 minutes. Welcome to Side Effects with an A. Hello and welcome to Side Effects. Scott, Christy, so glad to have you guys in here today. Welcome, Christy. It is so good to be back and actually see real people again. And we are social distance. I know. A little PSA. We are six feet. We came in with our masks. We're sanitized. We're ready to go. And we really are just so excited. This is the first time in eight months we've been back in the studio together. So. And you're sitting behind like a long board. <laughs> I'm extra far away. Yeah, you're like extra far away. So we're ready to go. Yes. So Scott, why don't you just jump right into why we have our favorite person here today? Well, hey, <laughs> thanks for being here too. So you you are like one of our favorites for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but if we go back in time um, to March 16th, and that's when we sent our workforce home, uh, and because of uh, COVID-19, when when you think about that and that 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 struggle from kind of work from home. Just kind of help us maybe understand that transition that we were all kind of forced to maybe walk walk through. Well, the pandemic kind of came onto us in a flash. We really weren't prepared for it. Companies did make the right choice and sent their employees home to be safe. They mm -hmm. wanted to protect them. And in a crisis, we all step up. We tend to get done what needs to get done. The problem is, is that working from home is not something that works well long term. We're simply not wired that way. Humans are wired to want to be part of a community. Mm -hmm. And two thirds of the US population is in fact extroverted. They need to see people. They need to interact with people in order to stay healthy. So the crisis was great. We had a great response. But working from home long term may not be the best choice for many employees. You know, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine. He's an introvert. So we had this Zoom call, and we were talking. And oddly enough, I asked him how he was doing. And he said, I'm doing great. <laughs> My first thought was I wanted to be sarcastic. But I, but I didn't. And I'm like, well, why are you doing great? And it was an empathetic mm -hmm. question. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? It absolutely. And this is what he said, and it blew me away. He said, um, I'm an introvert, and I have a really di difficult time connecting with people. But now I have something in common with everybody. Aww, so exactly. I'm able to I'm able to just have a conversation with people and I'm doing really well. And it took my breath away. Yeah, you kind of forget that as extroverts, we're like dying for human connection. Yeah. But then think about the introverts. They're they're actually able to live normal life and feel connected. Right. And yeah. yeah. So we're fortunate that this happened in a time where we have the technology to stay in touch with each other. Mm -hmm. We kind of had broken away a little bit with cell phones, people, you know, being able to kind of get their news from their the social media mm -hmm. instead of from a human being. But we really still need in-person connection in order to stay healthy and especially in order to be able to brainstorm and work for our customers. Right. So, for example, um, 
we're kind of doing a hybrid po- approach here at MB. We have people who can come in, will, but it, there's lots of reasons people ought to stay home for health reasons, child care, so many things. I have a friend that works in New York City, and she said they're never going back to the office. There's no hybrid approach. They are staying remote forever. So what are some of the different things you're seeing with companies as we go into this next phase? Well, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we're protecting our employees. And there are some people that are (coughs) compromised. They may have health issues that they should be safe. And we all should be safe. That's Mm -hmm. why we're social distancing. We're wearing masks. We're doing hand sanitizer. We were joking before um, we started here that it's the things that we learned in kindergarten. Wash your hands. (laughs) Don't bite or lick each other. (laughs) But we also learned to be together and help each other. So when you look at companies, there's a lot of reasons why they're doing work from home. And there are a lot of reasons financially why they might want to get rid of real estate Mm -hmm. and have people work from home. That's a huge financial burden, particularly in your larger cities, to have to pay rent in some of that prime real estate. But for human beings, we want to be together. So if it was just a work from home and the rest of society was, I'm going to put in air quotes, normal, It wouldn't be quite so bad, but we shut down churches. We shut down sports. We made people, you know, social distance in um, grocery stores. We closed restaurants. So we truly isolated human beings for a long period of time. This is a rather odd experiment that we're going to be learning about for years and years to come. So companies did that to make their people safe. They may keep it a work from home forever because it's financially in their interest. Right. It's not necessarily, though, in the interest of employees and their mental health. Yeah, I I think one of the things, too, that's really interesting is, you know, as we were talking about other companies, on average, they might spend $4,000 per belly button, right, Mm -hmm. for space. And then you say, well, maybe I don't need that anymore. But, you know, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, we're human beings, and we like like being human. Mm -hmm. And being human means being connection, being close to people. Mm Mm-hmm. And then one of the things that you, you, you had mentioned, um, and even in some of your notes, is like when people start taking things home, mm-hmm. which I, I, mm-hmm. I, like I read that, I was like, well, that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. So as a leader, make sure you're walking around the, the building if your people are coming. So pictures mm-hmm. are disappearing. Is, is, is that what you meant by that? Oh, absolutely. When you go into an organization, the space that you have, how close to other people Are you part of a department? Are you close to where the leader's office is? That's really important. And you do create a space that's your own. We bring in pictures of our family. We bring in things that are important to us. And as you said, when people get ready to leave, one of the first signs is they start to take what's important to them back home. Oh, wow. That is so true. Mm -hmm. If I just think about around the office, when we left in March, I took home all my stuff (laughs) because I was going to be home. Mm -hmm. So... In a workplace, offices are, you know, that are bringing people back, they're social distancing, which is what they should do, but that means there's a lot of empty cubes. Mm -hmm. It makes people feel like the company is not doing as well as it's actually doing Mm -hmm. because they don't see the activity that they used to see in the past. Yeah, I like the other thing that you mentioned, too, is like the perception of what's clean. Like, so I'm a male. I clean everything on this planet with a Windex. <laughs> Good for you. The it universal cleans, cleaner. <laughs> it cleans everything. <laughs> but people have a different idea of what clean is. Is that? Absolutely. And when you don't see something happening, your first thing is to protect yourself. Fear is the first response. Mm-hmm. It comes in one tenth of a second. So you look at something and you say before, oh, maybe somebody had been there before, but they probably weren't that dirty. Now you look at it and you think, I could pick up a disease, a virus that could kill me or kill someone I love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I ever do trainings, I bring Clorox wipes and I've always wiped tables off because people spill things. Oh, yeah. But now people are really afraid of each other. They're afraid of getting close to someone. We don't shake hands anymore. We stay six feet apart. We've created fear of the people that we spent the most time with during a day, our employees, our coworkers. You know... (coughs) One of the things, too, that I think is interesting, and we're going to talk about this at the end, is most people will do what they see. So if somebody is listening and they're inside of an organization and you might be really disciplined at night cleaning, and if you're in HR or you're the leader, you feel great about that, but you might want to 
think about leaning into and cleaning while people are there mm -hmm. just so they can experience. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That's exactly what you need to do because if I didn't see it, did it really happen? Oh, yeah. So you want to make sure that they're seeing at some point in time after a meeting that people are actually cleaning the conference room table. That in the bathrooms that they see each other wiping out. And that's a leader's role. And it's actually everyone's role to be modeling that to help each other. Mm -hmm. To say that we're part of a team. We're all doing this together. I do feel like a reminder here in the office too. Like sometimes you're like, it feels kind of normal. There's a lot of people here today. It feels, yeah, we're wearing our masks. But then I go into the cafeteria and all of the doors and handles are not on the doors anymore or on the cabinets. So you're like, you're reminded like, oh yeah, we're still in a pandemic. We don't want to have high touch zones. And our, our leadership in our HR department, I think did an excellent job of making us feel really safe coming back. And then maybe it's those physical reminders of no more cabinet doors or no more shared spoons for the ice machine or a lot of things like that, and it makes you come in, and you're like, I feel safe here. So, Well, just listening to your voice when you said coming in and being with people and mm -hmm. seeing people again, and even with masks, we're seeing them. We have so many different senses that we're picking things up from people. And the truth of the matter is we love our families, right? but we need interaction with peers. We need interaction with people that have more experience than us if we're going to grow. I fear that we're going to be losing a lot of development of people in this year where people have been at home and they haven't been able to listen to someone or pick up something that someone said because they're virtual. Mm, yeah. How do you think this affects the new hire process? Like, what do you think it's going to take a lot longer to train people now? Um, not so much longer to train them. It's interesting. I did do a training for an uh, organization about a month and a half ago. And everything was socially distanced. We were very clean. We did all the protocols. But there, it was a mix of employees that had been with the organization for three to five years. And then there was an, an equal number of new hires that had just been hired. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate because one of the people who was a veteran basically gave a presentation on all the reasons why you should be so thrilled that you were hired by this company. Wow. That right there is what organizations must do. Not have their HR person tell the new employee how good things are, but really get a group together and ask their peers to talk about why they stay there, what they like about the organization, why it's different from places they've worked before. This is particularly important if you are hiring recent college grads who've not worked in a more corporate environment previously. They don't even know what they're getting that they don't know what they're getting. Mm -hmm. So kind of playing devil's advocate here a little bit, Zoom and Teams and our online connection, some people might say that's perfectly adequate. We don't, we don't need in person anymore. So what do you think when that's said? I think there is a, a place for team and for Zoom. Mm -hmm. But the counter to that is we've had increase in COVID because as um, students have gone back to colleges, what is the first thing that they've done? They've gotten together in groups. Right. Because that's just a human trait. We want to be together. We need to see each other. We need to know that we can trust people, that they're with us. So those are tools, just like your cell phone is a tool, just like, you know, anything in your office, your monitor, your laptop is a tool, but it isn't replacing that human connection that is so important for employees to feel in their organization for their employer so that they feel great in serving the customer. I think there's also <clears throat> just a lot of value in some training or at least acknowledgement in regards to nonverbal communication, uh, whether it be Zoom or Teams or, I mean, you just, you just name it. <clears throat> it mm -hmm. is, there is so many people that like, they don't even have their, their, their video on. Right. Mm -hmm. And th that's, it's so unproductive or they're look they're checking their cell phone or they're not paying attention. And, um, it's the little, it's the tiny, tiniest of, uh, of things that are really, really important. And I'm blown away. If you think about this, the power of the internet. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, the fact that it could handle a pandemic, right? A mm -hmm. global pandemic. And you think about if that goes, if that crashes, Ooh. 
I don't want to think about that. No. <laughs> but if you think of the, the the traffic just on Zoom and the traffic on me, like all of that traffic, mm-hmm. and, um, and and I'm not that smart, but I have to imagine like that's pretty sophisticated that it could handle you know basically 300 million people communicating back and forth. Mm-hmm. And now we're what eight months? Eight months in? Eight months in, and the cracks are starting mm-hmm. to show. You were just talking about. We can see all of those little teeny tiny things that are happening in Zooms and in WebEx, et cetera, that um, they're looking down. They're not paying attention. And when you're not with a physical human being, you tend to think you kind of can't be seen. Mm -hmm. And even right here on a podcast, I was going to put my hands over my eyes as if, (laughs) oh, you can't see me. (laughs) But also, we're all looking at the background behind them. Yeah, we're getting a, a chance to look at people's houses, and and I have a cup in my um, uh, breakfast area that says "Not today, Satan." Every time <laughs> I am on a Zoom, somebody has to call that out. In the office, we don't really look around that much because we're familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because I'll catch myself like looking at book titles. Oh yeah, like one well, well, that or what pictures. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what's interesting is. If that is not a person that you know well, we tend to distrust them. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at those book titles, you're like, did you sort of put that all together so that all those really, really high-end book titles make you look so super, super smart when everyone's looking at you? No. That you staged it. They wouldn't do that. I didn't even think of that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that came up quite a bit Mm -hmm. when all of the newscasters were working from home. Mm Mm-hmm. That everyone was saying, okay, what do their books tell us, you know, silently about their beliefs and their politics, etc. Mm-hmm. But it is no substitute for being in person. Mm-hmm. And, and we pick up so many different things. We know when someone's upset. We know better if they didn't understand something that we said. And even in a meeting, you could have the same number of people in an in-person meeting and in a Zoom. But in person, you're picking up those very, very quick um, signs, signals that you don't pick up electronically. Mm-hmm. Right. Have, have yeah. you seen that in some of the ones you've done? Oh, it, you know, all the time, all the time. And it's, they're really, it's really small stuff, like really small stuff. And I think for, you know, for a lot of, we, we, we've hired some people inside of COVID and. Um, a lot of people, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I called all of them in the car as I was driving. And so what I really loved is the fact that they're picking up random phone numbers, right? In, in, in a mm-hmm. day that you get all these spam calls. Because your cell phone used to be, like, really personal. Like, only, like, really close family and friends could get a hold of you. Those days are gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they picked it up. And the fact that, well, they want to pick it up, right? Which Absolutely. means connection. They want right? to talk to someone. They want to talk mm-hmm. to somebody. And then, then I'm calling them. Uh, and we're just having this conversation, and a lot of them have said, I'm just waiting for this shoe to drop. Like, is this place for real? I'm like, you know, the shoe doesn't drop here. Yeah. Now, <laughs> of course I can say that, mm-hmm. but for the most part, these are a lot of them came right out of school. This is their, this is their first job, mm-hmm. and I think for leaders, just stay really connected to your workforce. And keep going back to what made you a great place to work. Because the truth of the matter is, during this pandemic time, no organization is what it was before. McGowan Braybender has been, you know, year after year after year, a best place to work. You've worked at being a best place to work. But right now, it's not really McGowan Braybender. (laughs) And so you were absolutely right. People who've just come out of school are, no, it's not really like this. Because they haven't really experienced it Mm -hmm. yet. So the best people who can influence them are their peers. They can hear it from their leader. Mm -hmm. But then the peers can say, maybe you haven't seen it yet. But that doesn't mean it's not here. It's going to come back. That makes me light bulb come off. (laughs) At MB, we do a thing called the coffee chat now. And our HR team has paired up all of our new hires with peers And you have a 30-minute conversation with them. I just had one last week with one of our new hires in Columbus. And she started during COVID. And I'm like, how's it going? How are things? And she's like, it's 
difficult to learn this industry, like just being at my own house. But she's like, I've been able to connect with so many people. They've led me along the way. She's like, I'm excited to get into the office one day. But she's like, right now, she's like, I'm learning as much as I can by calling everyone and having meetings. And But her peers are teaching her. And the coffee chat was really fun because I like to get to know everyone in every office. So I was like, sign me up for this every week. But oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for doing that because you're exactly right. Because even HR says, well, Scott, what feedback did you get? And I'm like, look, I was born at night, not last night. I'm not going to get <laughs> feedback. Does that make sense? You're, you're not going to get candid <clears throat> feedback. No. Right. No. I'm going to get gratitude. Thank you. Thanks for calling. That's. Mm -hmm. but, but look at the effort that your organization has made to keep people connected. Mm -hmm. One of the big problems we're seeing is that particularly the younger people, if they are not part of a team, part of a group, and feel connected, they become self-centered versus team-centered. And so they're mm -hmm. less willing to sacrifice. They're less willing to stay late. They're less willing to get it to you today versus I'll get it to you tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And that's a big issue, getting people to truly engage in your organization so that they stay. Yeah. You know, the other thing that, that I think a, a lot of people are really worried about is just the impact on mental health. So Mental Health Day, I think, was Saturday or Sunday, yep. World Mental Health Day. And then my opinion is a large majority of people, um, because they, they couldn't go outside, went inside and actually gr grew and blossomed, like got to know themselves mm -hmm. better, had massive self-awareness. But then there's a large part of people out of fear that um, they haven't addressed those issues and they're not getting better they're getting worse yeah well even before this pandemic we have had an issue in our country about not taking mental health as seriously as physical health mm -hmm. if you break your leg everyone is right there for you but if you say my emotions are broken or I'm feeling depressed people can't see that mm -hmm. and so they dismiss it instead of saying wow what are the things that are causing that how do we get you to come out of that so people working from home you know particularly in the spring when you had kids at home trying to do school mm. your spouse was at home you're trying to do work you're trying to be that other person you're not at home when you're at work when you're a professional and that was a lot of togetherness at one time and we took you away from loved ones a lot of grandparents had to isolate a lot of people in nursing homes were very isolated mm -hmm. so that point of one there was a great deal of fear and then two we really didn't have any positivity any idea of when this was going to end so uncertainty really causes mental health problems we can handle the challenge we're america we've mm -hmm. won two world wars <laughs> we'll dive into it we're going to have a vaccine for this virus Mm -hmm. We don't know when, but we feel helpless right now. And that's really hard for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll admit I had struggled a lot with the work from home right off the bat because I was like, I need to be around people. I miss my friends. I miss going to talk to Kathy at the front desk. It was quite the transition for me. So I had to mentally prepare myself every day. I still needed to get up, get ready, go sit on the computer in my living room and figure out how to remold my schedule but it was definitely I still had com I'd call my my work friends and be like can we just have like a 10 minute conversation not about work because I don't know how else to make this happen so that was a lot of mental health I think for a lot of extroverts and introverts you had to figure out your new balance and your new schedule yeah and we just have to like do our best to remove the stigma of mental health and um, everybody has problems. Absolutely. And you'd be amazed. Someone told me a long time ago that if you took your own problems and you shared them inside of a room, you'd be shocked at how fast you'd pick up your own and go home. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> I like so that. The gift of vulnerability allows other people to know they're not alone. And half of it is just understanding that other people struggle too. And when you reach out, other people are available to help. So we have access to EAP. Mm -hmm. So we're, hey, we're really saying, hey, look, go. Here's the phone numbers. Reach out. And they've done great. Uh, there's there's great resources. Um, each community has leaned out, leaned into this. So the United Way, other organizations have really said we're here to help. We want to help you understand that. Uh, nursing homes. 
you know, we're, uh, you know, Zoom through a window and Skype through a window. All of those things are available. And we just have to let people know that, like, it's okay. And that's harder when you are afraid of people. I mean, I know in my own neighborhood, you know, you stay that six feet away. Yeah. And you're kind of like, okay, who have you been with? And are you going to give me something? If you're in the office, I could be passing Kenzie in the hallway, and she seems a little bit down, and I'll say, you know, hey, sweetie, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Even just somebody asking helps so much. Yeah. And saying that we're here for you. But even think about, um, there used to be a commute, and I often talk to senior leaders and mm -hmm. say, I don't think your commute is long enough <laughs> because you have to de-stress, detox from your work environment to come home to your family. Absolutely. And now you have, I have no time to transition. My family is right there. The kids are right there. And so that stress is even bigger than it used to be. Not only that, but when you had like, back in the day, you'd make a 12 o'clock and your next one would be two because you have to get in your car. But <laughs> this is how dumb I am. I make a 12 <laughs> and then a one and then a two and a three. And uh, so I had a meeting. Um, I had a sore throat last week, so I had to stay home. That's the rule of McGowan and Braben. Good if you know you. well, you stay home. And I was down in my uh, office downstairs. I hate that place now. <laughs> I mean, I was stuck down there. I was like, I don't want to sit down here anymore. The dungeon. It is. I <laughs> suffered like the dungeon. You definitely need to have that time. You need to have that break. And we've destroyed everybody's schedules. It used to be you got up and you knew your routine. Mm -hmm. And when you don't see something and now, you know, the leaves are so beautiful. If you're working from home, maybe you're not seeing that one favorite tree that you always like to On see. On your way to work, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that isolation piece is very, very bad for us. Mm -hmm. And it, we're, what we're s going to start seeing is people kind of backing off of that we're stepping up to the crisis they had in the early spring, and the days are getting shorter. It's getting darker. We don't have that, that punch of summertime. Yes. So organizations really do have to say to their people, we care about you. We need you. Speak up. But then find ways to get them interacting with each other. Um, when you were talking about the meetings that, you know, it you go from 12 to 1 and 1 to 2, I laugh and I think about when we were in high school, you only had a class that went to 9.50 because you had 10 minutes to run to your locker and get to the next class. Yep. Why don't we do that in business? Yeah. But we don't. Especially when you're on a Zoom call. You just exit and open the new screen. You don't even have to leave. Yeah, it's just a different mindset. And one of the things, too, that you talked about in regards to, th this is my opinion, so an organizational culture, is when you care about people before a crisis, when you go into one, mm -hmm. they will lean back into you. Absolutely. So if you didn't have a strong culture, but now all of a sudden you want one, you've got a really, really tall mountain to climb. You, you do. You have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But if you've had a good culture where people know no culture is perfect, but if they know you're trying, that you're continually thinking about giving them all the tools, all the support, to do their job very well. And all of our jobs are about helping other people in some way, shape, or form. Right. If you're tying that message together, that makes people feel like their work is very important. When you start to try to change a culture, and leaders have to do that all the time. A leader retires. Um, a leader leaves, and then somebody else has to come in. Culture is how we do things here, and you can change it instantly. It's what do you pay attention to, what do you support, and what do you say absolutely not in our organization. If you have an organization and somebody walks in the door without a mask, if you say immediately, you cannot come in without a mask mm -hmm. and stop them instantaneously. That sends a message in the organization. But Which goes back to, because I agree 100%, like adults, and, and I'll put myself in this camp, so are like children. They will most often do what they see. Exactly. But in a remote world, there's not a lot we can see. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're not walking down the halls. We're not seeing misbehavior. Mm-hmm. Because people want to know one thing normally in a culture. How do I get in trouble around here? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that sad? <laughs> yes, but they want to know. But in a world where I can't see all of that evidence, and it's just maybe on a Zoom screen, that's, that's going to be complicated for us to figure out. It's complicated, and it starts to create <laughs> distrust among people 
who've trusted each other implicitly for years. Right. All of a sudden it's, well, I mean, did Kinsey actually shower before she came on this call? Did she just <laughs> sleep in, you know, till the very last minute? Um, if she says that she's on another Does call. Does Scott have sweatpants on? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, that is, well, that's, I was just going to say, I was watching a TikTok the other day, and it was like a video of someone in March, and they were still fully groomed. They look great. They had their coffee. They are ready for the call. And then it like fast forwarded to now, and they didn't shave. They had their pajamas on, and then they had like a suit on top of the pajamas. And it's like, how would they know? They can't see from the waist down. So it's crazy. Well, to put it kind of simply, when soldiers go, go to war in order to achieve a goal, they wear a uniform. And right. so I'm not saying that we go back to suits all the time, etc. But in order to be the most effective, you have to get into that uniform to give your best for work. And if you have family around, you haven't seen other people in a long time, you're scared of people coming in because you're afraid they may have COVID and you actually can die from this disease. It's not just a flu you can die from it, then we're breaking down all of the parts of society. Who can I trust? Who can't I trust? Are they getting something I'm not getting? Does my employer really care about me or not? You know, it's amazing. Right. So I've been to, I, I was in the Atlanta airport. When people want something, they will behave. <laughs> so people want to travel, right? I want to go somewhere. Full mask, complete compliance, washing hands, stand in line six feet apart because I want something. I want to travel, right? Or I have to travel, maybe one of those two. But you step out of that and you let people have free rate, it is, there's just a lot of shenanigans. You have a <laughs> lot of young college men who right now are following every single protocol because they want to play football. Um, the LA Lakers just won you know, the NBA championship. Yep. They went into a bubble for months. Oh, yeah. In order to be able to win that championship. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Isn't that wild to mm -hmm. think about? <coughs> you do what you, but you've got to do what mm -hmm. you got to do. So. Well, and we've lost that sense. Again, it kind of, it's like a loop. When we're together, we tend to take care of each other better. Once we're separated, we start to become so individualistic and we do what feels right for us as opposed to what was right for others. I mean, this isn't the first pandemic the United States has had. Mm -hmm. Back in the 1920s, the Spanish flu. And hundreds of thousands of people died, millions died worldwide. And they didn't have the hospitals, the, the equipment, the um, safety gear that we have now. We should be doing better. And I wish that's what people were talking mm -hmm. about is ideas and how do we get through this and that we are going to get through this. Yep. When organizations reach out to you today and you're talking to them, wh wh what are they really struggling with? So the when they ask your advice. They're struggling with um, all the changes because it, it's adding, you know, another 20% to your day. There's yep. very few companies where people just had so much extra free time sitting around. Everybody really was working. We had a very vibrant economy that wasn't shut down because the economy was bad. It was shut down to save people's lives. We still have a pretty vibrant economy for those who are working. So when an organization contacts me, their first piece is, how do we get people to start looking ahead? How do we get them to start thinking about mm. the opportunities and ah. continuing to prepare? How do we get them to be thinking about our customers? We still have to meet our customers' needs. What I love about, I hate to say what I love about the pandemic, was just what you opened with. There's been so many great ideas that people have come up with because they had to. So this is also a time of who are your top high potential people? How do you develop them? Mm -hmm. What is the future going to look like? Those types of things are the things that we talk about. and the idea that you have to be talking about their personal health. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I feel like we could talk about this for hours and hours, but unfortunately we have to eventually wrap <laughs> up, but I did want to get a few more tips from you. So companies that are navigating this right now, what, what are, what's some advice you give them about heading back to the office and safely doing that and transitioning back into the office. So, Number one for getting back to the office is if 
you have a workforce that has worked from home, they've developed their own habits, their own beliefs. So you have to be very clear about the behavior and the compliance that you're looking for. And may I say, be ruthless about, you know, imposing that and making sure that it happens. If that is, you know, you stay home if you've traveled. I have a couple of organizations where people traveled, they didn't feel sick, but then they came into the office and people were infected. Mm. So you have to say, you have to take personal responsibility. If you make the decision to go somewhere, you were just talking about people wanting to travel. Yep. If you've been somewhere, if you're not feeling well, it is your responsibility to not make this worse for our organization. Again, really making sure that people are seeing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If, if you have to every week talk about all the things that you have done to help keep them and the customer safe. In this you know, entire conversation, we've talked about employees, but really at the end of the day, we want to make sure our customers are safe. We have to do the work that we have to do for our customers. How do we make sure they're safe? Because those customers are people's family, loved ones. So really think about the customer, think about what you need to be doing and how do we do this safely? Because the truth of the matter is, there's always going to be customers that need to be taken care of. And this is going to be a time of a lot of innovation and a lot of new ideas. So focus on the future and where you want to go and how you're going to get there and prepare for the vaccine coming. Because it will come. When you pour hundreds of millions of dollars into something, you're going to get a solution. (laughs) Yes. Something's coming. I appreciate that. That's some great advice, some great insight for anyone looking to return to the office successfully. So, Christy, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We could have done that. Maybe we'll do a part two because we've got lots more we could talk about. If people have questions and they want to have this discussed, just let me know. All right. We'll put Christy's contact information on our website. And if any of you listeners have questions or comments, you can email me at Kenzie at HealthierBirthdays.com. Or or Scott at HealthierBirthdays.com. Excellent. So thank you again, Christy. We appreciate having you in. Thanks for having me. It was great to see people again. Yeah, it's great to see you too. Thanks for coming all the way here too. Not a problem. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.